Good morning guys. This is an 01 Jetta 2.0 liter AEG engine and uh, uh, the complaint is a low volume persistent coolant leak over the preceding months. Just small volume, never really could sort out the cause and so I had a closer look at the engine today. I think I found the cause. Right down here. You can see right on the edge there where the tubing meets the middle of the edge and I've got discoloration. And then further deep, I don't know if you can appreciate it, but further deep there's discoloration down there as well. And uh, I can see a little bit of coolant leaking at the very base of the engine as well. So I'm going to try and verify that now. And I'm going to add in a leak detector. This is ultralight. I'm going to put that into the coolant system. I've flushed it. I'm going to add this and then uh, run it for a bit. And then after some time we'll come back and see if this helps us to define where the leak is, if this verifies this is the location. So I've come back in the night to show you this with the UV dye. It doesn't show up so great on video, but if you look, it, that's the coolant uh, overflow reservoir. And you see how bright yellow the uh, coolant is? That's that UV dye that's in there. And um, it's very dramatic when I look at this, even with the naked eye. But if you look in there, you can see we've got that same bright yellow color right where the coolant hose for lange meets up with the engine body. So I've verified that that's where my leak is. So the first thing I'm going to do is drain my coolant, rotate this outward and pull out. This is a combination of UV dye and distilled water. I don't have any coolant in here at all. Now you notice it's dripping slowly. That's because I don't have the cap off and so air has to come in. So I'm going to take the um, coolant uh, cap off and you'll see how quickly it flows after that. So draining the radiator itself doesn't drain all the coolant out. Uh, to get the rest of the coolant near the engine, I'm going to release this hose here uh, next to the oil cooler and that hose will allow uh, more coolant from inside the engine to come out. You don't necessarily need to do this, but I'm going to do a complete coolant flush in this vehicle anyway. There's quite a bit of coolant in the engine that's not drained by the radiator. So the coolant hose flange that we need to get off is this device right here. This is a coolant temp sensor and so we got a lot of stuff in our way and so I'm going to take some of that stuff off now. I'm going to take off the air box, a couple of Phillips head screws here and that should just come off. Uh, and we'll take this off right to the level of the throttle body. And then step by step we're going to disassemble, disassemble some of the air hoses and get down to the bolts that we need to undo. I hate little plastic clips and uh, here's one of them. This is the air box of the air pump and um, it's got a little clip on it looks like this. And the way you get this undone is you squeeze here and it releases the two side points. So squeeze like that and pull and it pulls right out of the air box like that. Of course there are different ways to mark things but uh, my nightmare is not knowing how to put it back together again, so I tend to mark the ends of components so that they can fit back together. So I've got some white tape there, and then white tape on this one by my air pump. I'm going to just stuff a rag into there so nothing goes down that hole. So I'm going to unplug this sensor just so I can get the air box completely out of the way. It's got a little tab here. You pull up on the tab and it opens. If you look there, pulling up on the tab it releases this clip that catches right here. And you can take the air box right out of the way. So next, um, more of the air intake stuff. I'm going to undo this connector here and this connector here and then this connector on, on this side. We'll see if I have to undo, undo this electrical connector and then lift the uh, air intake uh, hose out of the way. Okay, so I want this out of the way so I can see better. And I squeeze here and pull it, and that comes off. And then this tab here, you flick this tab up and it lifts off. And there's a similar connector on this side, squeeze and pull. 
there's that part. And then the throttle cable, it's kind of in my way, so it's held by these little clips here and here, and then there's one on this as well. You lift that out of the way. And next I'm going to get rid of this little piece of tubing here, a T-shaped piece ending there. I'm going to do this. There's a camera oh, out of there I'm going to try and get at, and then this. And then for better visual access anyway, I'm going to take off this bracket with a little nut here and here, and try and clean it up a bit. Okay, once those two nuts are off, they're 10 millimeter, this little flange comes off. Now these little plastic clips just pry out like that. I'm not going to be able to get these wires completely off, but I would like to get them out of the way as much as I can so I can see things properly. wires are out I can see this little connector piece more easily. I could have just undone it here as well, but uh, I think I can get at this one from here so we'll see how that works out. There we are. So this is the engine coolant temp sensor right here and it has a little plastic clip. Now the hook is on the inside that way, pointing this way, and so you take your thumb and you pry back on this little plastic thing and wiggle, and it should come off. There. So there's the hook, and then you pry up on this little plastic thing here, and that pries that little lever backwards. I find this little tool to be quite useful at breaking the seal that forms over time. Makes it easier to get some of these hoses off. So this next part is hard to do and film at the same time. But um, I'll show you where these nuts are. There's the one right in there. You can actually lift up the hose. I have to put down the light to do that. You can lift up the hose here, give yourself better access to that nut. And then the second nut is deep under here. Uh, you can just barely see it right in there. And so we'll put our wrench in underneath. So we'll do the bottom nut now. This is a 10 millimeter um, nut on it. I'm using a short extension. tight at all. So I lifted this tubing up, it gives more access. Get that 10 millimeter nut on there. Those two bolts appear to be identical, but I'll use the identical arrangement just to be sure. Now, the coolant hose flange should just lift out of here. And there we have it. Okay, so here's what it looks like. The coolant hose flange off the vehicle. You can see lots of residue from previous drainage. And I'm going to have to clean that whole surface up very carefully. Put on the new flange with the new gasket. Tighten it up and we'll be, we'll be good to go. So here's the coolant hose flange off the vehicle, vehicle. and I'm going to have to swap over the coolant temp sensor right there. We'll just release that little clip and it should be out. And I don't see any cracks in the housing, but the general recommendation is to replace the whole flange when you run into this kind of leak. So that's what I'm going to do. So we'll pull this clip out. There it is there. coolant temp sensor comes right out. There's a little o-ring in there I'll have to uh, re replace with a new o-ring or swap out. So here's our 
new coolant flange. It seems to be identical to the previous one. I asked him to give me a new O-ring for the um, engine coolant temp sensor because the previous O-ring was messed up. This is a little thicker than my generic O-rings that I have on stock. And so I'm going to put it all back together again. I'll put the coolant temp sensor in place. Um, I'm going to pay careful attention to the mating flange to make sure it's good. In uh, my case, I'm not going to put um, RTV sealant on this gasket. You could do that. Um, I've seen reference to that being done in some centers, but um, I'm, I'm going to rely on the uh, product as it stands and see how that goes. Um, that said, I think there's a significant design flaw in any system that breaks down um, shortly after the warranty expires, and, and on balance, I'd say I'm not overly happy with the way this is designed. So I smeared a little bit of G12 coolant on the rubber flange to allow that to seal up properly without binding anywhere. So the one pipe that seems a little awkward to get out of the way is, is this one here. It's made of metal. When you lift it up, it rotates. And so I'm using a bungee cord to just pull it out of the way rather than trying to go through the extra effort of unhooking it at this end. Strangely, I found it a little bit easier to thread this into place after I had put the hoses back in, in place. So all day to have the torque spec on this listed as seven foot-pounds. And this is an inch-pound torque meter, so that works out to 84 inch-pounds. So I've torqued both up, and I'm just going to... 84. And because I took the time to mark the individual hose connections, I have no difficulty at all putting it all back together again. You may notice that I cleaned the valve covers on this as well. They were quite dirty, and I did wonder if the valve covers were leaking, but on closer scrutiny, I don't, I don't think that's the case. I think the um, oil was a consequence of oil that came out through the inlet tube, and uh, there wasn't really any evidence of oil leaking down further. So at this stage of the repair, it's so easy to forget to do something, to forget to tie up a clip, so working through it, I'm just careful to make sure that I'm not miss anything, forgetting to tie up a hose clamp, etc. You snap into place nicely. So the most important part of any repair is to double check your work. And so I've just been doing that just now. I've got the throttle, throttle cable back in place. I don't think I've left any hoses off. I've got all my sensors back into place, so I think I'm good to go. So at this point I'm going to fill it with coolant. I'm going to start with distilled water. And, of course, we need to move on to the most important part of this whole process, which is burping the system. There will be air in the middle of the engine that needs to come out before the cooling system can work effectively. The conventional way of doing that is to use the radiator cap, but this is a more modern system that doesn't include a radiator cap. It just has a coolant overflow reservoir. And so the way we deal with that is we fill it up, we start the vehicle, and wait until the thermostat opens and then after the thermostat is opened the air will typically distill backward into the coolant reservoir and then out to uh, atmosphere and uh, we run the vehicle they say 2000 rpms for about 10 or 15 minutes and ideally to allow the um, to allow the engine to get hot enough that the cooling fans turn on uh, with my cold climate here that seems to be problematic but in any case we're going to burp the system now I want to thank you guys for watching, and if you uh, like this video and you want to see more, please click, click uh, subscribe. Um, I, feel free to uh, leave any comments.